So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got an amazing guest. I am so excited. Literally nine years of my life, I've been invested in The Flash. And we've got one of the stars, John Corr. John, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very kindly. And I cannot believe you're here. And I'm so enjoying uh, season nine. And before we drop into this amazing show, I just wanted to ask a few questions to give the fans a bit of background for yourself. Um, so why acting? Why not a normal nine to five job? And why choose one of the most competitive industries to get into? Gosh, let's see if I can give you a short answer. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was always playing in front of cameras if I could get my hands on them or, you know, being very imaginative and adventurous outdoors. I had a young mom and we moved around a lot. And so I think at some point, uh, I, I did some plays in elementary. Um, and at the time I was being pretty severely bullied and, after this sort of play that we did that we were forced to do for a, for a world religions class, I think, um, I was terrified, but I got on stage and I got off and people were clapping and they liked me. And I thought it was really interesting, um, that maybe I could solve my problems that way or, uh, interface, um, with the rest of the world and relate to other people through storytelling and jokes and characters and voices and things like that. And so I think, um, as silly as this might sound, it was a defense mechanism in the beginning. Um, and I ended up following my cousin to theater school on a whim after taking a year off, um, from education, um, after secondary school, not really certain what I wanted to do or where I wanted to land. Um, and I felt like if I applied myself, I could do a number of things. Um, but again, I had done a lot of musicals and been pretty well classically trained in high school even. And so it, it just naturally pulled me in its own direction. And uh, over time, I, I fell in love with the craft itself and um, with the good and noble pursuit of storytelling. Um, you can change a life with a fart joke. You can, you can move people mm -hmm. with something. <laughs> And do you know what? I would love to see uh, what those bullies are up to now. Do you know what I mean? Watching their TV and thinking, oh, my days, who is this guy? So, uh, so the quest question was, do you have a plan in place um, in terms of your career and where you want to go in the future? It's funny you ask that. My agent was um, asking similar questions the <laughs> other day. And I think that it is helpful to have a vision of some kind in life if you're goal setting. Um, however, I think you need to have a flexible vision. Um, sometimes life goes left, sometimes it goes right, sometimes it's negative, positive, challenging, uh, smooth sailing. I think that there's a lot that I want to do and that I'd love to do. Um, and, and this job in the flash is certainly not my first or last, but it's a benchmark. And so, you know, we could lean into establishing me as an action guy. We could, we could try to make sure that we're exploring, um, some kind of extreme contrast or more range with the next part. But I think it's really important to stay open-minded because I don't know if that role will be, uh, in a comedy or a drama, or, or if it will be as an astronaut or a heroin addict, or, you know, I'm um, dumbing it down for myself here for the sake of discussion. Of course, you play Bill, you don't play the, the pirate or, or, or whatever. Mm. Uh, but of course, but being a storyteller, you can do many, many things, which I think is one wonderful. It really is. And so can... let's talk about The Flash. Um, season nine. Um, and so far, episode seven, up to episode seven, it's been incredible. And it's just getting better and better and better with each episode. So what attracted you? Let's, so let's go back in time. What attracted you uh, to the role of Mark Blaine, a.k.a. Chill Blaine? I mean, what really got your juices going to go for this part? Um, I'll try to give you a short answer here as well. Um, growing up um, without a father, you tend to look for the happy story, I promise. Uh, 
you tend to look for role models, whether you know it or not. But we'd get them here or there, or we'd collect bottles and get candies and comics or something. And um, especially when you're younger, the the metaphors uh, can be really powerful. And I think I was deeply impacted by a lot of DC characters, especially, but comic book characters in general. And um, you know, that's a deeper conversation. Um, but for the most part, I think these things can get people in the gym. They can encourage the opposite of wanton substance abuse. Maybe they can uh, teach people that love takes strength and courage. Uh, it's, it's vulnerable and very scary. And, and, you know, anybody can hate it's cowardly. It's, it's automatic. It's easy. Mm. Um, any, any being a part of something that, uh, uh, was deeply meaningful to me and really exciting. Um, my family was already a, uh, they were all fans of the show. It was in our lives, in our homes. Um, I got this audition and I just got so excited about it. Um, at the time, I was training really, really hard in general anyway um, in martial arts and acrobatics. I, it felt like the right time. I was in the right place. Uh, most of the world was shutting down, Toronto, Los Angeles. I'm pretty sure Bollywood was shut down, but we were still mm. filming a bit here in Vancouver. And so as a Canadian, I guess I shopped around locally and, and you know, got to look at the tape. And uh, I just felt like I knew what they wanted, uh, whether that's true or not. I saw the page and, and, and I just thought I could really kind of put a spin on it and bring some of myself to it, but still hits this obnoxiously abby not yet self-aware self-serving creepy ninja pirate is is sort of how i ended up thinking about him and, and making him fun for me to play um on a, on a whole other level for myself so we made sure that he could um hold his own against frost and even though he's a, at least look that way look and feel like a fighter for example or you know, they, they had me calling her Frosty, and I thought, no, it's got to be something else. Maybe, maybe it's condescending. It's it's the sort of thing that you might, you know, he calls her Snowflake, and, and I pitched a few versions. That's the one that Eric liked. Um, I said, what if it's condescending? And it's this sort of nickname um, that turns into a term of endearment in the end. It becomes the sort of goo goo gaga thing that we say uh, in private with our significant others. Um, it just becomes, yeah, as they get closer, that that it's kind of a metaphor for the relationship shifting. And I, they just uh, treated me with so much love and respect. And I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. The, the audition itself was a two, three tier process. And uh, once I sent my first tape off, I've never done this before, uh, <laughs> but I emailed her and I said, come on, that's got to be a booking. <laughs> and I, 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 just, I couldn't, you know, I was like, that has to be it. And, um, you know, she took a look at it and was like, okay, I'm going to get on the phone. And, you know, so we got the call back and uh, that was that. I had so much fun doing it. I got to read opposite Danielle totally unexpectedly. I didn't know that was happening. I had dummy sides originally. Didn't know who I was playing, um, which I think is a good thing. Eric had asked me, do you want, you know, do you want to know? You're this far along. Do you want to know who you're playing? And I paused. I'm so glad I said this. I went, no, I don't think so. I think I think I want to play the scene and the and the, the dynamic between these two people because whatever I'm doing has gotten me this far. Mm. Um, and in the end, looking back, I think if you had told me, I would have, I would have come up with an icy voice or you know something completely foolish that that you know might have been creative and interesting up here, but just wouldn't have played or mm. you know wouldn't have been as like, natural, I suppose. Um, that was a long rant. Thank you for asking. I hope I answered it's your okay. question. I mean, obviously, in the comics, uh, we see Chill Blaine for the very first time in 1991. So, obviously, you get the role. Uh, you didn't know who you was auditioning for, uh, you know, at the beginning. I mean, you get the role. I mean, what sort of research did you do, um, you know, to get into character? And how difficult is it maybe not to look at the comics so, so, so much and develop a character in your own way? Um. Well, I, the first thing I did was was dive into all the, the the comics. I have a binder. Um, it was a gift, a lovely gift um, that has every appearance Chilblains ever had. And of course, 
if you know a little bit about that or a lot, um, there are many different chillblains and he is connected to the golden glider and captain cold's storyline. And of course, given the things that happened on league, um, or, or sorry, um, the things that happened to captain cold, um, mm. and the glider and so on already in, in the, you know, the shared arrowverse, uh, kind of, we had to, they had to find their own, their own, um, reinvention of this character. And so they already had a pretty clear vision. Um, but I, I guess through, through the audition process, they were looking for, for someone to kind of flesh the rest of it out. Um, I certainly do a lot of reading and bring as much from the, the books into the show as I can. Sometimes you don't even notice. Uh, I had a shirt with some thumb holes cut out at one point. Um, because I remember doing that in the nineties, we'd shoot the holes on our hoodies and things. And, uh, so there's one episode where he's wearing that it's a little nod to the, to the comics in the nineties. And I always try to work things in that, you know, I might uh, see 10, 20 years from now and go, Oh yeah, there's, you know, I'm proud of those little details. <laughs> I was paying attention. Um, and the fans are certainly so intelligent. You can't put a plant from a different continent in the background without them noticing and hitting the message mm -hmm. boards on IMDb or whatever. So yeah um i mean you, you, you joined to... sorry you 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 oh. joined um in season seven uh and you joined such a well-established cast i mean what was that experience like i mean did you watch the show before actually uh join joining the cast and uh how welcome did they made you make you feel because it does from what i can see just one big family i uh i watched every single episode um, I had already seen a lot back in the day. This was one of my brother's favorite, favorite shows and he used to watch it with our dad before he passed and getting to be there was very surreal. Um, I love, I genuinely love the cast and the crew and the production. It, it really is one big family. And, uh, <sighs> I, I just, I, you never really outrun your childhood. So I was very, very shy. I was very intimidated. Um, it was my first series regular as well. But in my mind, I was a guest who was invited to stay longer. Uh, it took me a long time to feel like it might be my house a bit too. Um, and so I wanted the work to speak for itself. And I just, uh, which I think people appreciated because I, I would show up, you know, pretty prepared and, and excited. And, you know, it wasn't just another day for me. Uh, and, you know, I think they appreciated that and we started to have lots of fun. We got comfortable with each other. Um, Grant and I probably sound like we don't like each other, but we are grinning and laughing and joking nonstop. It is absolutely wonderful. The running gag on set is that nobody knows my name. I play a character <laughs> called April, maybe, or <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> Why is he in Joe's house? It's, uh... <laughs> So it's, um, yeah, it, it truly um, has been my life's honor. I, I don't know that I've had that much fun before, but just uh, professionally, uh, nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, that's living the dream, really. You know, I, like I, I said, I mean, I'm a, it's a benchmark. I had a lot of fun. Mm. I mean, pers personally, I've got to say, it's one of the best CW shows I've ever seen. Um, and it's, it's going to break my heart when I see the finale. But let's just quickly go yeah. over the action because you're no stranger to action scenes and fight scenes, especially from Shadowhunters. Uh, so how yeah. does this show differ for you for yourself in the way of the action scenes uh, opposed to, say, Sh Shadowhunters? Um, I'm not sure there's necessarily a tremendous difference um, but I think there's, I, th I think a lot of hungry actors, and I mean, we all ought to be hungry no matter where we're at. Um, the phrase that was shared with me was that a lot of actors will overpromise and underdeliver. You know, uh, we can all ride horses and no, I have, you have, I sword fight all the time. Do you? And, uh, you know, <laughs> as in acting, you can get rusty. And so, you know, when's the last time you did a scene? It's your headshots all well and good. Who reps you? It's all well and good. But I mean, do are you doing the thing? Do you are you know? Just because you could bench three hundred in college doesn't mean you can right now, does it? Mm -hmm. You know, you know how, but can you drop and give me three hundred right now? 
Um, I think acting is a lot like that as well, but I'm digressing. Where were we? Martial arts, right? Um, Sorry, what was the question exactly? So basically, I mean, obviously we see you in some spectacular fight scenes, um, yes. you know, in this show. And obviously you're no stranger to those fights sort, sort of scenes from Shadowhunters. So, you know, how different is it, you know, being on the Flash opposed to the Shadowhunters in the way of your action? Thank you. So I guess this is what I was rounding up to is I don't tend to, I don't advertise very well and I'm trying to embrace social media and, myself out there a little bit more but i have always trained and always will um even though i will surely transform in other ways for other roles um the martial arts will always be a part of my life and will always be something that i, that I do um and the thing is when you're yeah i showed up to shadow hunters and uh, Choreography is is not that difficult. It's not like the, for me. It's not like they're throwing me through walls or glass windows and dropping me from great heights, hitting me with cars. I mean, make no make no mistake. I'm, I'm not pretending to to have those skill sets. But you know, I could do some flips and wire work and choreo is something I feel I excel at. And so they can have a, a ton of fun with me. But you still have to work with other actors who may or may not have, have certain skill sets yet or at the time. Um, you're also working. They'll they'll run you through with stunts for the choreography. Uh, my point is, it becomes a collage. What you see on screen is typically some loose impression of what the previs was originally, what stunts shot and had intended for the director to shoot. Then you see what the director had intended to shoot. Then what actually happened on the day, because things change all of the time. You know, you're constantly adapting. Uh, it, it, it depends on the editing, how it's cut together, how it's shot. You know, um, on the flash, or they, we, I got to know this stunt team. Um, I got to spend some time with them and, and, you know, we just, we fell in love and vibed and, um, they were the ones who were really trying to tell the higher ups that like, you should point the camera at him for this scene. He can do it. Um, doesn't mean I, I, I love, you know, the doubles we get to work with and amazing guys, extraordinarily talented, but if you can see my face a bit and catch a character beat, why not? You know, so um, I was their biggest fans. They were really big supporters as well. And you just get to see more of me than you, you might otherwise. But it's not as if when I booked this, they said, OK, we know what he can do. We're going to choreograph for him, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, originally, for example, that last fight um, in Red Death's house, at Red Death's house, so to speak, uh, it was much longer. And I'd come in and within 20 minutes, we pretty much had it. And they didn't change anything. They were just, they'd say, hey, can, do you want to try this next part? And I, I'd go, yeah. And it went great. So, okay, do you want to try this next part? And, and in no time, we had this extraordinary sequence. And uh, we just had to cut it down for time. It was going to be 15 minutes of chill blink, kicking butt. And that's, uh, the, the show's called The Flash. So we got to go back to him. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least for a little bit, right? Um, so it, that was a long answer. Essentially, it was really nice to be uh, to feel seen and appreciated and, and to be encouraged to get involved and come down. We'd rehearse for hours, whether we shot it or not. Um, and it was just really cool. I loved all of the initiative that we brought to the table. And so in the end, we only got a few strikes in on that episode. But it was, you know, it's great. Lots of fun. In the future, doing an action project, you know, we might get to you know, write and choreograph for me or, you know, who knows, uh, really pull that camera out, nice wide shot, no cuts, beautiful choreography, you know, we'll see what I mean, happens. But. For me, um, I think my favourite thing about you, John, and the way you've delivered the character of Mark is a story arc with you and Frost uh, and now Keon. Um, you know, and it's so heartbreaking at times. It really, really is. And we see Mark's pain more than ever um, in the last episode, episode se se seven. I mean, do you get a chance ever to influence the writers on maybe the direction that, that you know, Mark's going to go into? And what was that like, you know, t tackling that storyline, that heartbreaking storyline? Gosh, uh, I mean, I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I, I really love what they've done. They've brought a lot of substance to this guy that didn't need to be there. They didn't have to do that. Um, I, 
I, I don't, so sometimes you, you get the lines and, and no matter what you think of them or not, you, you just, your job, you have to make them work. Um, to, to me, of course, you have to be an artist and you have opinions and ideas and you bring things to the table, but ideally you're not married to them and you know, you're, you're happy to go, Oh, oops, no, I like your thing. We're doing your thing. Throw that other one out. Um, I'm trying to phrase this properly. Um, they, they're very collaborative. They're very open to suggestions, things like that. Uh, but we only have so much time, of course. There, there needs to be, and, and there are so many different characters that need to be honored and different storylines that need to be honored. And, you know, every episode has different priorities and things like that. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your patience, gosh. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've got to say the way that that this story arc is it, is so meaty. It must be great for an actor to be be able to have this sort of role where you are tackling so many feelings. And for me, as a man, I I, I feel for Mark. I really, really do because you know I want the good for for him. I mean, do you think ever? I mean, obviously the show is finishing. Um, but let's explore the fact that, you know, say if it wasn't, where would you like Mark's journey to go? And do you think that, that Mark and Keon would ever get back to, well, not back together, but get together? Uh, I had, I had come up with all kinds of different possibilities. Uh, one that I really liked was that he struggles, um, for a significant period of time with his alcoholism, for example, we could get into that. Mm. and uh, make it very clear that we're not glamorizing this and that this is not a, 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 a cool thing to do. He's, he's not feeling cool. Um, and yeah, there's nothing cool about his situation at that point in time. Um, he, he, the increased alcohol intake is, is symptomatic of, of a spiral, I mm. think. Um, he, he's coping in some of the only ways he knows how. I don't think he's used to coping. I don't think he's used to caring um, in, the, in the way that he does and feeling as vulnerable as he does. So anything he can do to mute that along the way, he, he might do. And so there's a part of me that thought, hey, let's let's go another two seasons. Let's gain some weight. Let's uh, let's make him very depressed. Uh, <laughs> we can spend some time in this world uh, so that it's not sort of, you know, overnight he's had a better idea and he feels good now. You know, mm -hmm. I, it's too, I don't think that does Frost's character in and of itself, herself, um, justice. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the second part of that was Keon, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, I'm really not sure. I'd love to spend um, an eternity with this character. I mean, um, even playing, sometimes I fantasize about like an HBO Max version and then what i might what the language might feel like or, or the the costume might look like or this or that or you know i definitely do love this character and he was designed to love to hate and hate to love you're supposed to think what a douche once in a while um but the trick the tricky trick is trying to hit that in a way that isn't so unlikable that the the character is not fun to watch he's not entertaining you're like ah why you know why is he here today <laughs> yeah yeah i mean yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, let's talk about Finale because they are bringing back lots of the OG cast. Um, so it must be spectacular to see all these characters that you probably saw, you know, uh, when you was watching the show before you came in on season seven, all come back. I mean, what was that experience like being surrounded by so many um, of the OG cast ready for the Finale? Oh man, it's it was it was overwhelming for me at first. I mean, these are people whose I, I can't pretend to know, especially at the time, but you know whose work I admire a great deal. And uh, I mean, what, every single person that I met was very gracious um, and fun to talk to, and funny and smart. And I, I mean, I would just be name dropping, but it, it's it's truly everyone. Um, I've, I've had moments where I'm shaking someone's hand. We're both tearing up saying what we're saying. Um, we're blown away by how much love and respect we have for each other already. You know, um, 
every they were very welcoming and said some very nice things and the the, the the sentiment is completely mutual. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was just, uh, you're, you're starstruck in a sense, but you're also telling yourself that, Hey, today your peers, um, you know, it's like you, you gotta be able to do your job and behave naturally and things like that. And so to me, sometimes I say the acting is the easy part, but you know, I don't think I took a picture until the, our last shot on set or something. I mean, that's not true, but I mean, really me and Grant or, or whatever, I, I was, it was my first day of school is how it felt almost all of the time, unless I was in a lot for several weeks or months in a row, but every once in a while, you know, you, you pop in for an episode or two, then you're out for one. And, you know, uh, and so it, it always felt like we were just getting going and then take a break and then we uh, just get going and then we take a break. Um, and so it was you know, by the end, I, I finally settled into myself as a person on set, um, in a way that, I wish it happened 20 years ago, but it was, it was it's a nice to experience nonetheless. Still here, things are improving. Um, not that there was a problem before, but I guess what I'm saying is I, I was just more comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, I didn't know how to ask for anything that I might have wanted or needed. Heaven forbid I do, you know, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily doing yourself or the project or your, your colleagues uh, the opposite of a disservice. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can mean well, but... It's not necessarily being an artist or professional. It was a, it was a big learning curve for me in, in a really exciting, healthy way. So it was like the opportunity to do this for the first time. Um, so it'll only be even better going forward, but I got to learn from people like Danielle Panabaker or Grant Gustin or, you know, people who have had to, who've struggled with a life work balance. I mean, I, that's maybe a strong word and I don't mean to speak for them, but what I mean is they work extremely hard. They've had extremely, mm -hmm. uh, dense, uh, condensed schedules. Mm -hmm. It just seems almost impossible to be healthy or happy or to have a personal life or anything like that. And they do, they pull it off. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it, it was, and so I got to see how they did that, um, in terms of life skills. Uh, or professional choices or the way they'd handle themselves with say producers or uh, fans. It, it was really cool to um, see from the inside out. Mm. Um, I, mean, I mean, obviously you had a wonderful rap party uh, because mm -hmm. John Wesley's ship is, is not one Love. to not put pictures out and he is the proper OG flash. I, I've had him on the show and he is such a great guy to chat with. So I'm very yeah. jealous that, that you've worked one-on-one uh, -on -one with him. Uh, I mean, what was the rap party like? And the most important question, who's the best dancer and who's the worst dancer of the cast? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Um, we all know that Grant can sing and dance, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But Candace has moves. Brandon has moves. Everybody's really multi-talented. Uh, I, I, I would love to see a video of that rap party. I really do. And then uh, quickly, just a few more quest questions for you, for you John. Um, have you managed to liberate any keepsakes from the show as sort of a memento of your time um, work, work, working on it? I sure have, yeah. Uh, there was <laughs> uh, I'll share this story. Um some very well-meaning and lovely people cross departmentally told me to take my costume. And I said, wow, unbelievable. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. Then I got a call. Hey, don't worry. You can keep it, but we need it back because you're shooting this Friday. I went, oh, spit the taco out of my mouth. You know, <laughs> I, thought, well, I thought I was done with that part. Um, but here we go and do our best. Uh, and so I brought it in and and I was told to keep it again by completely different people. So, and I, we have a stunt set and, you know, sort of, I'm, I'm not thinking twice about this. It's probably how it goes at Warner Brothers. Um, I'm the new kid, what do I know? And then I got a call again, if we really need that, if you know where it is, blah, blah, blah. I'm, oh, absolutely, okay. Um, probably looks like I'm getting caught trying to steal this thing. I'm not gonna give you any names. They're good people who mean well. I'm sorry it wasn't theirs to give, but here it is. You know, I, I'm going to be as transparent as possible. And, you know, I hope you understand it's all love. And uh, I went straight to Eric and explained the whole thing. And he, he, he understood completely. Um, and then 
I opened a box uh, and he had given me my gear, um, which is to me the far more elaborate, cool, keepsakey bit of the, you know, that's, that's what I would have chosen if I thought it would, if I was given the choice. Um, and so I, I don't know uh, how they found that out, but it was, yeah, it teared up a little bit. It was, just, it was what it means. <laughs> Do you know what I've I, I've just got visions of you in full cost costume on your sofa with a beer in hand, <laughs> pizza, and then you getting the uh, call and trying to balance the pizza and the beer and and try not get it on your costume and go oh dear <laughs> let's let's give that a bit of a wash. Um, so obviously, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously you can't divulge anything about the finale or the rest of the season, but what have we got look for? to look forward to without your NDA exploding. I mean, what sort of journey and ride are we in for uh, right up to the finale? Oh, it's, well, to me, um, I, as a fan, first and foremost, um, I do think this is one of the most exciting seasons. They, they really pulled out a lot of stops and um, I hope I'm going to use the expression correctly. Just a lot, a lot of people with big hearts and big talent are, are, are really paying attention. And so obviously you can't please everyone, but I do think I can't wait to see a significant portion of the fan base go, oh, <laughs> and kind of, when, once they see what we've done, they, there's a lot of assumption. I find, you know, I was bumped up to a series regular and then people thought I was dead in the third episode. <laughs> the third or fourth episode, you know, mm. probably not. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so sometimes you see message boards and, and, and people are so excited about so many different things, but there's that one thing that they, ah, if only, and, I, and I'll know that give it an episode. It's exactly where we're going. And uh, with, with, you know, uh, hopefully you're still surprised in all the right ways, but don't, don't, it's too early to jump to conclusions. The, the, mm. the, we, you know, that first episode this season, we wanted you to feel like it might be a certain way. We wanted you to go, what? That's, that's too easy. Why is, why is Mark there now? Why is he like that? Why does he have that relationship with Barry? It's too easy. It's not right. And then you find out about the time loop and this and that. And, you know, mm. um, it, 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 it was, it's, we want people to jump to those conclusions so that they tune in and, uh, uh, hopefully are, are delighted, um, rewarded for sticking the tough stuff with us. Do you know what? I am sure that it's going to be an, a spectacular rest of season because this show obviously, you know, listens to the fans. They produce an amazing show that honours the characters. Um, and I think a lot of the fan base are, are just concerned that it's going to end in the right way. But I've got every faith in the writers, in the showrunners, uh, that it's going to be spectacular and I cannot wait. I mean, have you got a message for all the fans That's out right. there that has followed this show for the last nine years? A message, my goodness. Um, thank you. Uh, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. Um, but as, as a fan myself, uh, because I certainly was a fan of the show long before I ever knew I would get the chance to audition for it, um, at, at the risk of sounding trite, I, I think when you boil it down, the show is about seeing the good in people, trying to find, pay, to me, the message is to pay it forward as much as possible. Um, I'm my happiest. I, I experience the most self-respect when I feel of use to others. Um, and that's not something that I read or, or that, I chose to experience or anything. It's just, it, to me, it's a fact of nature, so to speak. I, I'm, I feel good when I do good. And the, that sort of accrues momentum ideally. And, uh, I think the more that we expose ourselves to each other in positive, open-minded, communicative, fun, uh, mutually respectful ways so the world just becomes a far more interesting creative strong place uh and so at the risk of, of sounding cheesy I, I i think the show's message is love and i think the fans understand that uh 
and I'm just so tremendously honored to, to be a part of something that's special and impactful. Uh, it has changed my life professionally and personally. Uh, I'm just so grateful to be here and to get to speak to people like you. And and so, and, and the beautiful thing about it is that your character will always be on that screen, will always be in that box set, that will always be on those shelves. And that's the beauty, I suppose, of being a, stor a storyteller, that, that you, you've been on this show since se season seven, and yes, it is coming to an end, but it's going to be a show that's always going to be remembered. And as soon as my girls are, are old enough, um, and, and one's called Lois after Lois Lane, I'm a big geek, and one's called yeah. Cara after Cara Danvers. So as soon as they're older, I'm so getting the box sets out of The Flash. I'm so going to try and get them to watch it but who knows <laughs> you know yeah, girls yeah. they've got attention yeah. span of uh, you know tiny but you know what john it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show it's been an honor thank you for your part in this amazing show as your part as mark chilblain it's been incredible i can't wait for the rest of the se season keep safe and stay super my friend brian likewise thank you so very much for this um talk to you again soon yeah.